Songbird is out on VOD this weekend. You know what this movie is about? The COVID-19 pandemic. Yep, you heard that right. Written, filmed, all within the period of the COVID-19 pandemic. In this movie, it is four years later. It is 2024 and this pandemic is still ravaging the world. It is now called COVID-23. Yeah, you heard that right. During this COVID-23 lockdown, Nico, a young man with rare immunity, must overcome martial law, murderous vigilantes, and a powerful family to reunite with his love, Sarah. Do I really have to talk about this movie? The best way to describe this movie right now is that I would rather take a metal glove, put it on, slap myself in the nuts for a couple hours, than watch this movie. Either that or I would just rather punch bees in the face. This movie has less charisma than a parking meter. And I'm sorry, there's... I don't usually get like this on my channel, but with this movie, I have to. It angered me. This is a movie that angered me. I don't like talking about sensitive topics, but it angered me. You can see it in the tone of my voice. It angered me. It is offensive. It is in poor taste. I have no idea why they thought that this was a good idea. You're not only writing a script during the COVID-19 pandemic about a pandemic, you're making a movie about the COVID-19 pandemic. Not only that, but the message that you're conveying in this movie that I picked up on right at first was that, oh, hey, this thing's still around four years later in 2024. The world's no better. So you know what that means? Life is shit. What a piss poor message. How, like, are you shitty people? Are you torturing us on purpose? Why would you want that to be the message of your movie? No. N I, no. I do not buy the fact that these, that the two characters in this movie, that's, oh, it's a message of hope and love. Bullshit. No, it wasn't. It was a message of, oh, hey, the world is just a shitty place. It's probably gonna stay a shitty place. I would not expect anything less from a producer like Michael Bay. Only he would have the gall. Him or Zack Snyder. I have no idea how this project was greenlit, because you know what it was? The studio saw this and they're like, hmm, a movie about the pandemic. All right, we'll get people to watch it. That's all they care about is viewership, money, whatever the hell they want. They're not like, well, you know, that's in bad taste. We should wait at least like three years. It's like this. April 15th comes around and the Boston Marathon bombing happens. Month, a month later, you release Patriot's Day, or you release Stronger. That's in bad taste. You gotta give it time to pass. They didn't even give the COVID-19 pandemic time to pass. They filmed this damn movie in the middle of the pandemic, and it's about the pandemic. We're getting into any actual filmmaking here. What filmmaking? I mean, apparently their vision of the future, other than trying to live through this pandemic, is gonna be hopeless and life is still gonna be shit in four years. Apparently their vision of the future is a broken Ferris wheel that's like half rusted and gone because nobody's been to amusement parks. So we can't even have fun? I can still think of fun things to do. I don't think I've had this much fun talking about a movie review since my last Flashdance Festival. That was fun. There's like 36 and four-fifths different plot lines going on in here. They're all convoluted as shit. I don't care about any of the characters. Literally, when the two characters, Nico and Sarah, I'm spoiling it. I don't care. They meet up at the end. They reunite. Yay! Happy ending! Woohoo! But at the same time, like, mil the military's got, like, their guns on Nico, and I'm like, do it, just fucking shoot him, I don't care. That's the type of emotion this movie elicits out of you, because you, the characters are so, <laughs> they're not even cardboard cutouts. I don't even know how to describe them. Are they cookie cutter? No, uh, they're not characters, regardless. Mm. I don't know what the acting was. Is that like elementary school like play? I honestly have no idea why some of these characters are even in the movie. Like what is Alexandra Daddario doing in this movie? I mean, I get it. Yeah, she's hot. Is that the reason why she's in the movie? Probably. Because you can't have a movie with Michael Bay's involvement without the hottest actress ever. I guarantee Michael Bay was just like, well, um, you know, I got an actress in mind. Uh, have you seen this scene? in True Detective. For anybody that's wondering, you know what scene I'm talking about. We've all seen it. Might as well just put her in this movie, film her, don't even direct her, don't even tell her how to act, just have her say her lines. That's what everybody does in this movie, they just say their lines. No facial expressions, no emotion in their voices. They're just, eh, saying their lines, like this. 
It might even be improvising. I guarantee you though that if the writers came up with this movie, it wasn't just them. It was an idea that they took from Michael Bay and this idea was his brainchild. Because he along with the studio just like, that is the perfect movie American audiences need right now. Because I'm Michael Bay, I'm all about America. Helicopters flying in front of sunsets, American flags blowing in the background. There are no American flags blowing in the background, but you will not believe how an American flag is co incorporated into this movie. I saw it and I died laughing. Do you wanna know how? Apparently, Richard Jewell has a drone. There's gonna be spoilers if you care about Songbird. <laughs> I don't think you care, though. The dude who played Richard Jewell has this drone, and he's like, apparently, he, he's a huge fan of Alexandra Daddario, who, I, was she an internet singer or was she a call girl? I couldn't figure that out. Movie never explained it. Let's just say she was a call girl singer, I guess. She's being harassed by Bradley Whitford. This dude, Paul Walter House's character, just has this drone that comes in and shoots him dead. Blood splatters on Alexander Daddario's car's window. And then you see a shot of the drone and I'm like, oh my God. That thing is custom made with an American flag. Michael Bay, you sly, smart Alec, man. You got us. <laughs> well, if I talk about this movie anymore, I am really just gonna go off on tangents that I don't think I should be going off on. If you wanna watch this movie, go right ahead. But to me, this is similar to Antebellum, just, offensive and in poor taste. That's not really something that I like to talk about on this channel, but after seeing this movie, I just couldn't help myself. That's how I felt with Antebellum. I do not know what goes through the minds of these filmmakers and these writers when they're just like, when they had these ideas that are in such poor taste and they can't even craft a good movie out of it. Like they should have just, they should have just pulled the release for this movie when everybody Gave, it, gave the trailer a negative reception. I mean, this is just way too soon for a movie like this. Like I said, you gotta wait at least three years. Patriot's Day came out four years, actually, because it came out in 2017 in a wide release. So four years, so it came out four years after the Boston Marathon bombing. The World Trade Center came out six years after September 11th. Songbird, a movie about COVID-19 that not only is about COVID-19, but is about how COVID-19 expands for the next four years, making our lives even shittier than they actually are, and, not, and spreading a message about hopelessness and despair in a time when we are going through hopelessness and despair and people are dying and cases are going up every single day, and that disease becomes COVID-23, is released during the COVID-19 pandemic. Do you understand how bad that sounds? Songbird, just go to popcorn hell. Every, I'm, I'm not even gonna pull up the fire logo because everybody knows that, that that's where I was going from the beginning with this review. Just just go in popcorn hell, rot and burn, take Michael Bay with you. Four Transformer sequels was torture enough. This is just beyond that. I have no, I have no idea. I rant over, I guess. I mean, I'm. this movie's angering me so much that I'm like, I can't even get my words out to put the plugin for my website down below. I mean, you guys know the drill by now. I mean, who, who knows? This might not even have an end screen. I, I really don't know. Is this the worst movie of the year in my opinion? Considering that I've seen A Deadly Legend and that movie thinks it invented the fade to black scene transitions, at least it wasn't offensive or in bad taste. It was just bad. So yeah, I'm going to say Songbird right now is at number one worst movies of the year so just in case you're wondering like final thoughts i guess i'll see you later <laughs> <laughs>